My name is Bonnie Ramsey. I'm a professor of pediatrics at the University of Washington. I've been involved in cystic fibrosis care and research for the past 30 years. And I'm currently the director of the Cystic Fibrosis Therapeutics Development Network Coordinating Center in uh, Seattle. EPIC was a, a trial that was funded jointly by the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and the National Institutes of Health. It was a five-year-long study, and it was looking at treatment of very early pseudomonas infections in young children. It involved kids from ages 1 to 12 years of age when they had recently uh, had their first positive culture for pseudomonas. And it actually compared four different treatment approaches, one with tobramycin alone, one with tobramycin with ciprofloxacin, and then whether you give it uh, pre preventative therapy every three months for 18 months, or do you give it only when people have positive throat cultures for pseudomonas aeruginosa? Well, the results we're still trying to interpret because the data has just come out literally uh, at this meeting. And um, what it showed was that all the therapies worked. In all the therapies, the majority of patients uh, will eliminate pseudomonas from their lungs. In fact, um, over 80% of patients will clear the pseudomonas. And because the, all the therapies were so effective, we didn't see that the addition of two drugs, namely Toby and Cipro together, or the preventative therapy, what we, which we called cycled therapy, was any better than treating initially, clearing the lung, and then retreating if the pseudomonas came back into the lungs. Again, these are preliminary data, and we're still trying to analyze it. I think it will eventually uh, clearly impact the way uh, patients are treated when they get their first pseudomonas infection because this was the biggest comparative uh, trial that's ever been conducted in this age group. So uh, what I think is necessary and what we've asked is that there be a consensus conference among CF specialists to look at the data closely and then make recommendations. I think that we all want to use the least amount of antibiotics and therapy that we have to, uh, and yet be very effective in preventing the pseudomonas. And I think this study will allow us to look at the risk and benefit of different treatment regimens. I think what's most exciting is that we've been able to take an amazing amount of scientific knowledge that was gained since the identification of the gene. I think. Um, Dr. Francis Collins you know, talked so much about finding the gene 20 years ago, and it was so exciting. I was at that CF meeting. It was just amazing. But we didn't sit on our laurels. We've used that to really understand what the protein does, what's wrong with the abnormal protein, the fact that there are hundreds of different mutations and they all have different impacts on this protein, and then use that information to translate it into actual treatments so that we now have you know, probably a dozen potential therapies out there and some of them really impacting on the CFTR. I mean, the fact that we have made that progress is amazing. I mean, people will say, well, it's been 20 years. 20 years is nothing in the time of developing uh, treatments from scratch. 